Let's talk about bladder wall flares. These are undeniably the most common flare. Okay, so what are the triggers for, for a bladder wall flare? Diet, eating things that are acidic, high in acid, alcohol or caffeine. Um, vitamins and supplements, any vitamin that contains vitamin C and uh, ascorbic acid and or vitamin B6 are infamous for triggering bladder wall flares. We tend to do better with either low acid vitamin C called calcium ascorbate or just taking vitamins individually so that we can leave out the the high acid vitamin C. It's also better to eat foods that are actually high in vitamin C. They because they like broccoli has a lot of vitamin C in it and yet it's not going to irritate your bladder at all. Uh, hormones, changes in hormones can trigger bladder wall flare. It's very normal for a woman to flare the day that she ovulates and as well as a couple of days before her period. Um, and also chemical exposures. If you are in antibiotics like Augmentin, those are well known to trigger the bladder wall. So what do we do for a bladder wall flare? Well, in the first hour, rest. Stop what you're doing, sit down, rest and relax. Do some deep breathing to help ease any related stress and anxiety. Just sit down and chill for five or 10 minutes. Dilute your urine, We, especially if your flare was triggered by something irritating, like drinking a cup of coffee. Water helps to flush these irritants out of your body. So whenever a flare begins, look at your urine. If it's dark yellow or cloudy, you may be dehydrated. So try drinking a glass or two of water, or better yet, sip water over time. And then look at the color again. If it's still dark yellow, more water may be helpful. The third thing you can do is reduce urine acid levels. If, you're, if this flare was caused by eating an acidic food, take some pre-leaf or take a Tums or even a half a teaspoon of baking soda in a glass of water to alkalinize your urine and reduce some of that acid. But please note that the baking soda is a sodium product that can raise your blood pressure. So that's not ideal. It would be better to do something like pre-leaf or Tums. Again, in that first hour, that bladder wall flare, have a cup of chamomile or peppermint herbal tea. The, the reason why this is so important is it has proven smooth muscle relaxing properties. It acts to stop spasms in the bladder and in the bowel. So a good cup of chamomile tea, can't go wrong with that. Uh, this is the time to do some soothing foods. Focus on mild comfort foods like rice, potatoes, chicken, fresh breads, vanilla ice cream, vanilla milkshakes, pears, carrots, mushrooms, squash. This is a very mild diet because we don't want to create more irritation. Try doing some heat. I will tell you, I live with a heating pad. I live with a microwavable heating pad. Um, heat relaxes muscles. You can find two great heating pads in the IC Network shop. We have the Ginger Bee Heating Pad, which fits perfectly over the pelvis and it's in the shape of a triangle. It's the perfect design. Uh, that's a microwavable pad. I use it every night myself um, to deliver persistent heat to keep muscles relaxed. Or some people don't respond well to heat. They do better with cold therapy. That's not me. My body does not want cold. My body wants heat. But if your body responds to cold, then having some cold packs in your freezer and then always wrapping them in a towel or a shirt before you put them on your skin is really important. Don't ever put a cold pack directly on your skin, especially directly in your crotch, because you can get an ice burn. That would not be good down there. Now in the second hour of your bladder wall flare, consider some over-the-counter analgesics as an early intervention for mild pain you can go for some Advil, Motrin, or Tylenol, you know, ibuprofen or acetaminophen. They might be worth trying, but they shouldn't be expected to control severe pain. And please note that they both have pros and cons. So ibuprofen can irritate the stomach, while acetaminophen can irritate the liver. So this is not the time for you to be chowing down on, high, on lots and lots of ibuprofen or lots and lots of the other. Uh, there are consequences. You can try doing some over-the-counter PEA, 
palmy toilethanalamide, also known as Peora or pea leaf. Uh, PEA has been found in many studies to reduce chronic pain. It acts by calming nerves down, including the pain of IC. The IC pain found the IC study found a progressive reduction in pain over time when you, when using PEA. But we have a new study that shows that PEA can help with menstrual cramps in the first two hours. So PEA, not an opiate, no sign of addiction, incredibly safe, no side effects in the IC study, no known drug interactions. This could certainly be worth trying in that uh, bladder wall flare. You could do some azo bladder pain relief tablets. Those are the things that turn your urine orange. It's also known as pyridium. Pyridium is a prescription. Azo is the over-the-counter version. Please note that it's never meant to be used for long periods of time and has been recently linked to the development of cancer in animals. So just use it when you need it. This is not something meant to be taken every day for weeks and weeks and weeks. That's what we call chasing the symptoms. That's not going to get you where you need to go. We need to find and identify the underlying problem and treat that so you don't have the symptoms in the first place. If you're having bladder spasms where you're having a flip-floppy sensation or a strong spasm at the end of urination, you could ask your doctor for a prescription for a smooth muscle antispasmodic known as ditropan or oxybutynin. They are prescriptions. They can cause drowsiness. I, I will tell you, I only had to use them once. I only, I only went through one period where I thought it was having a flare. It turned out to be a very, very bad infection for six weeks. And at the end of that infection, my bladder was spasming like it's never spasmed before. And oxybutynin uh, turned those spasms off very, very quickly. And I really only, only had to do that for a couple of weeks while this calmed down. Aloe can have a soothing effect of the bladder on the bladder wall, just like it can be soothing to a sunburn. There are a lot of different aloe products on the market. You want to look for ones that are organic, anthraquinone-free, and contain PEA to calm the irritated nerves of your bladder. So the aloe path is my favorite aloe product because it does two things. It soothes the bladder wall and it calms nerves down. So having a bottle of aloe path on hand for bladder wall flare is not a bad idea. Then if you happen to use CBD, hemp or medical marijuana-based CBD, we know that that can reduce some pain and edibles and topical creams are quite commonly used in the IC patient population as compared to vaping or smoking. Now, getting serious about pain. Pain is a message. Your bladder and your pelvis are telling you that they are in distress. It's important that you not push through the pain. This is the time to relax and focus on what will make you feel better. The AUA guidelines are very compassionate towards patients struggling with pain. They want pain assessed at every appointment. They want doctors to treat pain in a mul with a multimodal approach. That means diet modification. That means physical therapy to relax muscles. That might mean a PEA, an over-the-counter supplement. And that could easily mean using an opioid medication during flare. That's what I was given 30 years ago. I mean... Honestly, I was in a terrible flare for a year because I was drinking a quarter cranberry juice a day. And I, en and I ended up at the ER four days in a row. And that finally got the attention of my urologist who said, wow, it's getting real bad. And I'm like, yes, it's really bad. And they finally gave me a very small prescription of Vicodin. An addict takes pain medicine to escape life. A responsible patient takes pain medicine so that they can perform their normal daily functions. One of the ways that you can talk to your doctor about pain care is you, if you just ask about pain meds, especially an opiate, you're going to look like a drug seeker. Instead, ask, tell the doctor how your pain limits you. Say, Doc, listen. I can't sit at my desk more than a half an hour before I have pain or and I have to get up. Or, doctor, I can't drive to work. Every time I hit a speed bump, I want to scream. That was very true for me my first year. 
or I can't go to church. I can't sit in the pew. Um, and then the question you ask the doctor is, what can we do to improve my ability to function? What can we do to improve my ability to function? And you let the doctor bring up, hmm, maybe you might benefit from a mild pain med. Think about it. You have to understand that the bladder does not repair itself overnight, nor do therapies work immediately. It takes time for the tissues in the bladder wall to calm and heal. A reasonable trial for a treatment for bladder wall issues is going to be really a couple of months. So what can you do? Number one, rescue installations. You can request a rescue installation from your urologist. This is an anesthetic cocktail. It usually contains lidocaine or marcaine to numb the nerves and heparin to coat the bladder wall. This is a great way to kind of physically protect the tissue and turn nerves off. The challenge is just getting in to have them done. Now, some patients learn how to do them at home. If your doctor will let you do that, that's great. But for anybody with a long-term bladder wall flare, doing a rescue installation to chill out the symptoms, not a bad idea. If you have active hunter's lesions, listen, you've got to get the lesions treated. The number one cause of long-term intense bladder wall pain are untreated hunter's lesions. I was just working with a patient yesterday who was diagnosed with lesions. They were never treated, and she was suffering immensely. So if they've looked in your bladder and found lesions, make sure they provide treatment. They can cauterize the lesion or they can inject a steroid in the lesion. In many cases, that reduces the pain tremendously and for a long period of time. Uh, if your muscles are tight, you should make sure you're going back into pelvic floor physical therapy. You can also use some traditional therapies like Mirbatric to control frequency urgency. You can use an antihistamine like Atarax and Visceral to reduce mast cell inflammation. You can do a low dose antidepressant like Amitriptyline Elevil to calm neuroinflammation. And of course, we have a wide variety of supplements now that have become quite popular because they don't carry the risk of the side effects found in traditional meds. So whether it is a chondroitin supplement, like Bladder Builder, Bladder Rest, Sister Protag, or a PEA supplement for pain like Peora or Pea Leaf, or an aloe supplement to just chill, the, chill and calm and soothe the bladder wall for a brief period of time, we have Allopath. So when is the time to visit the ER? If your pain and symptoms are very, very severe, if you're unable to urinate, if you have visible blood in your urine, it's your urine is pink, it's bright red, or blood clots, it's time to go to urgent care or the emergency room. I mean, at least consider it. Maybe call your doctor, let them know what's going on. Um, it is quite true that emergency room staff are unfamiliar with IC, but their fundamental job is to make sure that you are safe. They will generally check for UTI, kidney infections, and any other medical conditions that could, that could be contributing to your pain. And yes, it's quite true. Some patients have had very severe infections that went untreated for weeks because they thought they were flares. So when in doubt or if you are scared, always ask for help. Take home summary. Patients with Hunter's lesions, chemocystitis, GSM estrogen atrophy are the most vulnerable to bladder wall flares. Bladder wall flare symptoms are pain as the bladder fills with urine that is relieved by urination, urinary frequency, urgency, and nocturia, nighttime urination. 
Common triggers include chemical exposures, foods high in acid, alcohol, and salt. You can reduce acid in urine by drinking water and or alkalinizing your urine with pre-leaf. You can calm bladder spasms with chamomile and peppermint herbal tea. You can reduce bladder wall pain with azo bladder pain relief tablets. You can soothe the bladder with aloe. We suggest Allopath with PEA. You, rescue installations can be used to calm the bladder wall. Pain care is essential and should be treated with multimodal therapies, including physical therapy if needed, mindfulness to ease anxiety, and if necessary, pain medications. And to request help, talk with your doctor about how pain limits your ability to perform normal daily functions. Ask how they can improve your ability to function. Suggested products from the ICN shop, our IC101 Guide to Managing IC Flares, of course our book, IC101, It's Not Just a Bladder Disease, Breaking Through Chronic Pelvic Pain by Dr. Jerome Weiss, which is the best and most encouraging resource for patients with history of muscle and or nerve injury. When It Hurts Down There by Dr. Angie Storr is a fabulous book for any patient struggling with persistent pain. The ICN offers coaching services for patients who might be struggling with their diagnosis, phenotyping, their treatments. Just give us a phone call. Prelief is an easy, affordable, over-the-counter supplement that can help reduce acid-induced flares. It's great for preventing flares from coffee, etc. Palmitoyl ethanolamide was found to reduce pain and urinary symptoms in a 2019 IC study. It is the future of IC care. Look for brand names Pior and Prelief. And lastly, lactoferrin, a protein found in colostrum, was found to reduce IC flares in a study released in 2024.